I've got a customer who wants to be able to join flexible pipe together using standard size stainless steel fittings. These are inch and a half RJT fittings and they're made of three parts each fitting plus the seal. So you have a male part, the seal goes on there and then the liner on there and then it's held together with a nut. These are designed for butt welding onto stainless steel pipe. These are inch and a half which is 38 mil outside diameter and he wants to use stainless steel pipe that suits the flexible pipe. He uses two different sizes but wants to use the same size fitting. One size of tube needs to be uh, 32 mil OD to slip the flexible pipe onto. So the 32 mil tube has got to be flared out so that it lines up with the fitting. The other size of tube he needs is 40 mil. So the 40 mil has got to be reduced in size to line up with the fitting. The pieces he needs welding on the fittings only need to be about 80 mil long. To flare the smaller tube out I've got a tapered piece of steel I use so I'll be pressing that into the end of the tube and flare it out to 38mm and then to reduce the 40mm tube I've made a collar a steel collar which is 40mm this end and 38mm the other end so I'll be pressing the tube into that. They've got to line up exactly and then they'll be butt welded onto that face. I've got the short pieces of tube cut to size 32mm and the 40mm tube. Flared the ends out on the 32mm tubes. Used that tapered drift to do those. And then the collar. to do the 40mm tube. So both sizes of tube, these are the 40mm and these four are the 32mm tube. They all line up with the with the fitting. That will be welded on there. And the 40mm tube which is been reduced at the end. That lines up. So the next job is to get those welded on. When I press the drift and the collar onto these tubes. I used copper grease just to um, reduce the friction. 
The other thing I've done, after flaring the tube ends, I gripped them in the lathe and faced off these ends to get a perfect fit for butt welding. To get a high quality weld on the fittings I'm going to be using this turntable I made. I made this about probably 25 years ago. So the fittings will be clumped onto the turntable. Um, the inside of the fitting and the pipe will be purged with argon gas so argon gas is fed out of this it's actually a little bolt which has been drilled and then in each of the flats there's a little hole so the argon gas is fed up underneath goes up through that pipe, up through the middle and out through each one of those little holes on around the side there. So um, the fitting will be clamped on there and then um, that tube will sit on top. This will be blanked off, it'll have a little breather hole in to let the air out and then I shall be welding it whilst I'm rotating it and it'll be one continuous weld all the way round and the weld will be fully penetrated right through to the inside That's one of the fittings clamped onto the turntable. I've got a steel block sitting on the top of the pipe to blank the end off. And there's a little breather hole in the middle to let the air out. So I'll be rotating this with my left hand. Now I need to set the welding parameters to suit the job. To set the welding parameters you adjust each one of these stations around here. First station is uh, adjustment for the argon flow before the arc starts and that's the amps on at start amps. This is uh, slope up time, welding amps. This is for pulse welding, won't be using that, so we'll skip that one. This is slope down from welding amps to finishing amps, so that's a time adjustment. Uh, amps at the end, that wants to be as low as possible. And then here, will be argon adjustment so you need argon flowing after the arc's gone out and then you got the tungsten diameter I'll be using 2.4 tungsten and then um, we're back to the start again so uh, we'll make the adjustments I'll put one and a half seconds of argon before the arc starts. Um, start amps not really necessary for this but I have it lower than the welding amps. Set that at 30. I'll have two seconds slope up from start amps to welding amps. Welding amps I think um, about 40 amps will do that 
um, pulse welding, skip that one, slope down, like that two and a half seconds, that'll slope down from 40 amps to finishing amps in two and a half seconds, finishing amps on that as low as possible, that's four, four amps. Uh, argon at the end, we'll have about one and a half seconds of argon at the end after the arc goes out. Tungsten diameter, I'll be using 2.4 tungsten. Let me back to the start again. So the welder set, argon. I'll be adjusting the argon flow to the torch in the slow gauge about 7 litres a minute and a similar amount in the other flow meter which feeds the turntable. So this other pipe feeds the argon to the turntable for purging the inside of the fitting. So initially I'll I'll have that about seven litres a minute and then when it's purged I'll turn it down so it's just flowing a little bit. I've got that one welded. That's where the weld started and finished. So I'm just going to take it off the clamp, check inside, make sure it's, it's okay. When I weld this other half to the fitting, I might just reduce the amp slightly because that um, is a little bit thinner than the uh, end on the male part. That's the last one welded up. I did turn the amps down to weld this side of the fitting. Turned it down to 36 amps. There's no filler wire used in the welding. The joint is just fused together. That's all it needs. There you can see the weld inside. So those welds need cleaning up, that's the job finished. All the welds cleaned up. No filler wire used on those. The joints were just fused together. So they fit together like that. Rubber seal goes in there. Nut goes on there.
flexible pipe pushes onto the end. And uh, they're all interchangeable. So you can have a 32mm joining onto a 40mm. 